This is K-Pop Sunday brought to you by the K-Pop Sundays before you have to go back to work on Monday. We are your hosts, Odar, Min, and JR. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 13, or Episode 42, all totaled up. Today's episode is a continuation and the finale episode of the theme of our last two episodes now. <laughs> so we have finished our dive into the storied history of the 90s girl group Baby Vox. And now we're going to dive into their descendant group, Baby Vox Rev, or Baby Vox Renaissance Voices. Going forward, we will be calling them Rev to differentiate between the groups. As we mentioned in the last episode, the OG group finished their promotions in 2004, though they would not officially disband till 2006. Sometime before this, however, their company, Dr. Music, was on a mission, Assemble Baby Vox's successor. This successor would aim to be a leader in the second wave of K-pop. The first generation had seen its end with the disbandment and hiatus of many of the groups that had contributed to the Hallyu wave. Because of this, eyes were on the new generation of idols that sought to take up the mantle of the incredible stars that came before them. The music industry, which up to this point had seen somewhat of a decline in terms of physical album sales, was bolstered in 2006 as preparations for a digital age was being made. Because of the global mindset of Baby Vox Rev, they were a group to keep on people's radars. Another interesting thing about the industry at this time was that many industry experts thought that 2007 would be the year of the female artist. Many male groups and soloists had done well in the past, but the burgeoning female groups and soloists seemed to be the next big thing. Baby Vox Rev was one of the many groups that was thought to be part of this wave. A more sexy image was also predicted in artists like former Finkel member Yi Hyori and Ivy. Obviously, Rev would also follow in this direction, which ultimately had some adverse effects. Before going into the start of their actual career, let's look at the members in their pre-debut days. Like the sister group before them, Rev consisted of five members, An Jin Kyung, Young Eun Ji, Myung Sarang, Han Eri, and Han Young Kyung. Prior to joining Dr. Music, An Jin Kyung had already debuted in a trio as a member of Toya, a group under Norman Entertainment. They had been active in Japan for a year before their Korean debut in the summer of 2001. After Toya's disbandment in 2003, she would go on to debut in another trio in 2005. This was under Dr. Music and called Sinis. They would be a global group promoting in multiple countries before making their debut in Korea. According to their Namu Wiki, Zinus's disbandment was to make way for Baby Vox Rev. As the OG group had disbanded in 2006, Dr. Music needed another group to put out to the public. An Jin Kyung would then go on to debut in Rev as their leader and main vocalist. Similarly, Young Eun Ji also debuted in Zinus alongside Jin Kyung. Of course, Zinus eventually disbanded and Eun Ji would stay at Dr. Music and join Rev as their sub-vocalist and visual. She was one of the more hyped members as she is the younger sister of actress Young Mira. The next member, Myung Sarang, was to be the group's rapper and sub-vocalist. After being cast by the agency, her mother was Korean and her father was German, so she lived in Korea until she was six, and from then on went back and forth between Korea and Germany. According to an article we found, she grew up with a love for rock, which matched her quote-unquote wild sensibility. Interestingly, in one of the articles we found talking about Rev, they stated that the OG group did not have a rapper, even though Kim E. Z and Shi Woon were known to have rap sections in their songs. Then there was Han Eri, who was really hard to find information about early on in the research. By the time it came around to articles about her later in Rev's career, the information suddenly started flooding in. Her real last name is actually Kwan, but she adopted Han as a stage name. Many of the first articles about her have Kwan in place of Han. It took us a really long time to find confirmation that she used to be a model. However, it turns out she won a modeling contest in 2006 and also worked for a brand called Cindy the Perky. She was also a VJ for a local broadcasting station. And funnily enough, she's the only member to have made it into the group via an audition. She saw that auditions were happening while she was in college and apparently beat out a few thousand people to become the eventual sub-vocalist for Baby Vox Rev. 
According to the group's Namu Wiki, Han Young Kyung was known for being a trainee at SM Entertainment before joining the lineup of Rev. She felt that she would not be able to join their next group, SNSD, due to her age and therefore left in order to have a secure date of debut. She became known for her use of Saturi because she's originally from Yeongnam. Before debut, she had taken acting classes and eventually she was cast by Dr. Music and became the lead vocalist of Rev. Because she was in the middle in terms of age, she was able to be a bridge between the older and younger members. Before Rev's debut, hype was starting to surround the group. On December 6th of 2006, multiple articles were released about their impending introduction to the public. Dr. Music announced that the name of the group had been decided through a survey of native and overseas fan clubs that took in recommendations. Over 4,000 fans took part in the naming process, and 60% of the people polled agreed with the decision to name the group Baby Vox Rev. According to Dr. Music, Rev stands for the word Renaissance and gives the meaning of resurrection, at the same time as the start of Baby Vox's second period. And V stands for voice. It means a new beginning and resurrection of Baby Vox. The name that came in second place, Oga Mu Se Kyung, would go on to be the title of their debut album with the meaning that five beautiful women will surprise the world with their dance and song. With O meaning five and the rest of the name being Mandarin characters. Also in December, word of their official debut date came out, along with the group's intentions. According to KBS World, they were, quote, planning to focus on overseas activities. The group will first tour Asia to promote their album starting in China on January 10th and then move to Thailand and Vietnam on January 20th. They will begin activities in Korea on January 28th. Unquote. According to a no-cut news article from December 15th, multiple officials from these various countries took part in the preparations for this tour. Not only that, but these countries had entertainment companies reaching out to sign them for activities outside of Korea. At this point, the girls had not yet been introduced to the public, making it all the more impressive. By the 22nd of December, the members had been revealed through a series of individual photos featuring them lounging seductively on a red chair in white and black clothing, and another set with them in black leather against a black background. The preparations for the album were almost completely done. The tour would be starting soon, but the group would first take part in some articles to further the hype. In an article entitled, Please Look Forward to the Evolved Bibok, Baby Vox, Jin Kyung discussed how their group was different from the original Baby Vox team. Their music genres were a bit different, with Rev focusing more on pop as their main genre as opposed to the OG group's more edgy hip-hop vibe. They also had a more sexy approach to their choreography, which is evident in their debut track, She. In another article, the group said, If there is a difference from the first generation of Unis, it's a more provocative and powerful dance than before. In that same article, the members acknowledged the fact that many people were upset at the fact that they were debuting with such close ties to the first generation group. Quote, showed a resolute appearance, saying such a reaction was expected. It's also important to note that both the article and the members knew that this tie would give them way more interest to the general public. And this, of course, is usual with any groups that debut following a very popular sibling group. Many of the articles prior to Rev's debut has the members more often than not stating that they are an upgraded version of the original group. This was not the only obstacle to stand in the group's way. Rev was also debuting at a similar time to multiple other girl groups, such as the Wonder Girls and Kara, back then dubbed the Second Finkel. So the competition was fierce among them. Rev had something these other girls didn't, and that was a more mature and sexy image. By the end of 2006, it was announced that the girls would hold a debut showcase in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia to commemorate the 800th anniversary of Mongolia's founding. The winners of the group and album naming contests were also said to be present. On the day of the Mongolia showcase, December 25th, the venue, which was said to hold 4,000 people, ended up attracting 6,000. The concert, which was held over the course of two hours, was a bright, explosive event where the girls performed multiple songs by the OG group, as well as some of their new music. They would go on to have two more days of performances before receiving a plaque of appreciation from the committee that put on the event. The following Chinese showcase a few days later drew in quite a crowd, with up to 150 reports reporters and around 250 attendees. That number may sound small, but from what we understand, the event was held in a club which could account
account for the lack of numbers. An anti-fan was present there and told a reporter that the first iteration of the group was superior. This was often touched on in articles about the girls when they had just debuted, so this was not entirely surprising. But throughout the rest of their time in China, they had a handful of other promotions, including an appearance in a Chinese New Year TV special. Soon after their stint in China, on the 19th of January, the group moved on to Thailand, where they held another showcase in the capital of Bangkok. During this time, there was a threat of terrorism due to political unrest that had even caused Rain to postpone his tour dates there. Dr. Music had deliberated and came to the decision to continue on with the showcase regardless of the threats. After the showcase finished successfully, they also made appearances on TV and had multiple interviews to further their public image. It was there that the director of GMM Grammy, a group that the original Baby Vox had ties to, stated that if the first Baby Vox members had a soft image, the Rev members felt more sexy and intense. By all accounts, Rev was set to be a major group. Unji was garnering attention for advertisements before she even debuted in Korea, and the group as a whole was also getting love calls from jewelry and clothing companies across Asia. Their future was definitely looking bright. With that, the group finally came home to Korea to have their debut on Inkigayo on January 28, 2007. Following their first stage, they held a mini fan meeting to greet fans. Their debut album, as we mentioned earlier, was named Ogamu Sekyong, or as it is sometimes called, Baby Vox Rev. It was released on January 28, 2007, and consisted of nine tracks. Four of those tracks were remakes of OG Baby Vox songs, including Get Up, Killer, Happy, and Uyon, or Coincidence. The title track, She, and the third track, Secret, were both rated 19 due to its mature content. She also made waves for its sexy hip-shaking dance, which was attributed to underage member Sarang. Knowing that she is underage makes watching the video very uncomfortable, as does some of the original Baby Vox stuff when you realize mm -hmm. how young they were. It's like, ooh. <laughs> Yeah. Um, we have questions, we have concerns. This move caused some to believe that they had taken the title of Sexiest Choreography of 2007. Considering that, I think, what's-her-face was around during that time, uh, So In Young. Yeah. She was doing stuff back she then. Was, it's like, she was, was back mentioned then. many times. <laughs> My gosh, the amount of girls, sexy girls that were around that, during that time, that's a strong thing to say. The song ended up ranking on the Bugs music chart multiple times throughout its run, though not too high. The music video did not consist of a story, but rather was a run-of-the-mill music video of the girls dancing in multiple black and white outfits and backdrops. One of the weirder backdrops that we've ever seen is the bathroom stall scene in this video. Right, because it doesn't look like a real bathroom. Like, you I look at the so pictures confused. and it's like, what? Yeah, I was like, are those toilets? Hold on, what is going on? I just... <laughs> It was a decision, that's for sure. The weird thing about this is that they're supposed to be, like, looking super hot and sexy in a bathroom. And I'm like, what are you trying to imply here? The poppy upbeat song has a synth horn and bouncy backbeat. The lyrics itself are suggestive and talk about dancing, though it is strongly implied that other things are possibly happening. Unsurprisingly, Sarang actually raps in English. We often see this with multilingual K-pop idols. So, KBS banned the song from broadcasting in mid-February, saying that the hip dance was way too provocative for broadcasting. Though NBC and SBS let it through, so... You know, whatever. As this dance move was pretty integral to the song and its choreography, Rev was quite disappointed with the ruling because it was their killing point. Regardless, they decided to re-edit a version fit for broadcast and send it in for another deliberation, which probably got approved, I guess. I'm assuming it went through, but there was no follow-up information. Among all of this chaos, you may be wondering what the original Baby Vox members thought of another group of girls taking on the mantle of their name. Rev mentioned in multiple interviews that Kaminyon would come and talk with the girls and watch them rehearse and even teach them. We could not find any other information about if the other members helped out or what they even thought about Rev. So, who knows? <laughs> 
Once February came around, the members had a packed schedule of activities including performances at the Get Amped World Festival, the World Day of the Sick with Youth event, and for a military unit. There was one scare near the end of the month on February 28th when Hanari had breathing problems at a recording of one of their songs. Thankfully, she recovered quickly and continued to record. She would later go to a hospital and find that there were no other issues, allowing her to continue with promotions. By March 2nd, the girls had made their way to Vietnam, where they would be holding yet another showcase. They held a solo performance first, and then would go on to perform at an event that commemorated the 15th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Korea and Vietnam. A lot of hotshots attended, including political leaders and military officers. However, according to one article by a Yonhap News reporter, the atmosphere was lacking compared to other Korean celebrities because the singer's awareness was low. In other words, their popularity was just not there yet. Tickets for this showcase were supposedly given out for free, but even then, many Vietnamese locals had no desire to go see the girls perform. Ouch. I know. Once their time in Vietnam was done, the girls immediately went to Cambodia to hold another stage. One really cool thing that happened here was that they took all the proceeds from their concert and donated it to an orphanage in the form of school supplies and winter goods. This is something that they would continue to do going forward. Not much information was given on the performance itself. Incredibly soon after, the girls hopped on over to Thailand where they took part in the Pattaya Music Festival with other K-pop idols on March 16th. Interestingly, OG Baby Vox member Kan Myon also took part in this festival, albeit on a different day. Because it was on different days and because Rev left soon after their performance, the two were unable to have a joint stage, which is unacceptable. Later in March, Babyvox Rev was chosen as the MCs for the Armed Forces Broadcasting. According to a Sports Chosen article, it was implied that the girls would be in charge of hosting various programs. Good for them, that's experience. Mm -hmm. Their upward trajectory continued, and around mid-April, all members were featured on the episode of the KBS family drama, The Strongest Woman. April continued to bring more activities, including more performances and appearances on variety shows. Around this time, the girls stated their follow-up promotions for their second single, Never Say Goodbye. According to their Namu Wiki, this is where the issue started. Dr. Music had an issue with Mnet causing them to no longer be able to perform on M Countdown. This would show its hand later on as well. The video for Never Say Goodbye actually came out quite a bit later than anticipating, but this music video actually had a storyline and featured Yeon, Kyeyong, Eddie, and Unji crying and singing over their breaking relationships. It was quite dramatic and had a sepia-toned filter, which fit well with the pop ballad vibes. Of all of their songs, this one seems the most like an OG Baby Vox song. The lyrics are about a young girl yearning for a past love and asking them not to leave, to never say goodbye. On top of the promotions for the song, the girls also had a jam-packed schedule of activities for them to take part in. One of those activities was the Hallyu Star Fashion Festival, where the girls made an appearance as models. This was a charity event where the clothes that were worn by the participating celebrities would afterwards be donated. A fan sign event also took place beforehand. And from the pictures that we came across in articles, we found that Sarang was actually missing from these promotions. With the absence of Sarang in multiple promotions as the month of May went on, questions started to arise as to whether the group would continue on as four members instead of the original five. Dr. Music released a statement saying that Sarang was having issues at her school in Singapore, and that was the reason for her absence, and also said more information would soon be released. Another article stated that there could be a possibility of a lineup change, but that nothing had been decided so far. For the month of June, the group was going to be active in China and Thailand in order to promote their follow-up track, Never Say Goodbye. One of their few Korean promotions for this month was their participation in the first legal album of North Korean songs to be released ever. They were featured among other singers such as Vibe and Bae Sil Gi. Interestingly, this would be another connection to their older sister group who had gone to North Korea for a performance in the past. Around this time, Dr. Music revealed that they would be looking to recruit new members to Rev as Sarang had seemingly left the group entirely. 
July held a whirlwind of news being released about the girls. They were appointed as ambassadors for multiple organizations and Unji was revealed to be dating soccer player Lee Hyo for a whole year. The couple's names and homepages shot to the top of search rankings when the news came out. Sad news was also released. An article saying that Sarang had left the group to continue her studies shocked fans. This was confirmed by a Star News article on August 1st. According to Dr. Music, Sarang, who was 17 at the time, had to be on leave from school in order to promote. However, her school refused to give her any more time off and she was forced to go back. Another article said that a different explanation could be that she felt pressured being the youngest member in a sexy concept-based group. She was a minor after all. Instead of continuing as four members, Dr. Music reiterated that a new member would be added for their September comeback. During the next few months, they had less activities than when they first started out. They made appearances at a handful of events, but otherwise were quiet. On October 17th, news about the Eminet KM Music Festival, which would later become known as the Eminet Asian Music Awards, or MAMA two years later, nomination stated to be released. The award show, which was set to be held on November 17th, had Baby Vox, Rev, Up Against, Wonder Girls, Kara, Black Pearl, and Girls Generation for the Female Rookie of the Year category. Though, as you will remember, there's some alleged beef between the broadcasting station and the girls' company, so not gonna see them there. <laughs> Around the same time, the girls were planning on performing at university festivals and working toward their next album. However, Yeon Kyung and Unji contracted food poisoning and their schedules had to be put on hold. And at this point, way few articles about the group were being released, which was probably a sign that their momentum was starting to waver. On the final day of October, an article by Sports Chosen was released saying that Rev's new member would be revealed in December. Their next comeback showcase would be held in Japan on December 1st, and following that they would be going to Beijing and Cambodia to have more promotional activities. They did a lot of traveling. Mm -hmm. It's funny you say that. They had probably a million kilometers of frequent flyer miles combined by the time they ended their time as a group. Good. Good for oh. them. I hope they cashed in. <laughs> I know, I hope they did. <laughs> On November 6th, Baby Vox Rev held a press conference in Thailand to discuss the future of the group. While Sarang's absence had been known since June, to many people's shock, a second member would be added to the group due to the fact that Haneri had dropped out of the group because of personal reasons. And it was later revealed that her contract to talk to music had expired and she didn't feel as if being a singer was right for her. The first new addition to the group was Oh Min Jin, the third member of Zinis. If you remember, Jin Kyung and Unji were part of another global group that had debuted in Japan almost five years before. Min Jin was the third member of that trio. She was brought on because of her incredible dancing and her impressive singing. The next addition was Pak so -ri, who at the time was a 17-year-old girl from the Gangneung province. She had been getting attention from other agencies, but in the end decided to go with Dr. Music and Baby Vox Rev. She shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Let me just say that. <laughs> It was at this moment when she knew <laughs> she messed up. She took over the role of Makne and would add freshness and cute charm to the group. Both of the members had already undergone previous training and then had also received six months of training under Dr. Music. Their addition was thought to be a good choice because they would have no trouble keeping up in terms of skill. This push for Thailand and Cambodia was very deliberate on the part of Dr. Music. The CEO, Yoon Deng Ryung, stated that the market there was ready for K-pop so he planned to join hands with a Thai entertainment agency and further push his celebrities there. As mentioned before, Rev was up for the Female Rookie of the Year award at the MKMF Awards. Unfortunately, they did not win, nor were they present. As we have mentioned, there are rumors that MAMA is an attendance-only award show, meaning you don't show up, you don't get a prize. Instead, Wonder Girls went on to win, beating out not only Rev, but obviously Kara, Girls' Generation, and Black Pearl. 
December was another busy month, especially since they were going back and forth between Laos, Korea, and Cambodia before returning back home. All the events were a success, and there was some downtime before they continued more promotions. After a busy couple of months outside of Korea, and only a short period of rest time back at home, Rev was back to traveling, this time for their first event in Taiwan. The Korea-Taiwan Friendship Concert performance took place on January 5th. Super Junior was also present as another representative group of Korea. After a few events, the group essentially went radio silent. This was odd because even when they started slowing down the year before, around May and June, they were still taking part in events here and there. Finally, in early May, the girls made an appearance at the 2008 Spring Shopping Event and Fashion Festival as performers. Though, again, after this event, things would go quiet for just a little bit longer. Finally, in early July, they announced that their activities in Korea would be starting up again soon. They would release a new song with the title, Believe. Then shortly after, it was announced that they would be dropping the suffix rev and just use the OG name of Babyvox, which won't be confusing at all. The girls had said from the beginning that they felt burdened to have the name at all, so to take the rev out entirely made them feel even more burdened. However, for the sake of clarity, we will continue to call them rev because otherwise we will be confused and we can't have that. <laughs> On July 11th, they released their sophomore and final album, entitled Baby Box, which featured 10 tracks, which is pretty good. The title track is a remake of a Thai song by Tata Young, which was actually a remake of a Swedish song by Corolla, both which are linked in the script. It's fun. Please go listen. Of the 10 tracks, three of these tracks are actually remakes of the OG group's songs, and one of them is a Chinese version of their debut follow-up, Never Say Goodbye. Not many of the tracks were new, so it really should have been an EP. Or maybe even a best of, I guess. <laughs> if there were two. For a group that had a single album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They planned to promote in Korea for two months before going overseas to do even more promotions. The title track, I believe, is a retro dance song with a strong sound and presents a powerful and colorful stage. A funky song with a funky melody. The styling of the music video matches this vibe with colorful slip dresses and vintage-inspired hairstyles. Much like their debut song, there is no story to this music video, but rather the girls are just dancing in different outfits against various backdrops. The lyrics are simple and talk about how the girls realize that they are still in love with an old significant other and that they believe in love and that person. You know, love stuff. The girls are very positive and excited for this upcoming release, but they were also anxious to release it because they had been preparing for two months straight. And according to Young Kyung, this album has a concept that is feminine rather than sexy. And this is evident by the styling for the concept photos as well as what appears in the music video and live stages. They would have a handful of more promotions before Dr. Music shut it down. According to their Damu Wiki, part of the reason was due to the 2008 Olympics, but also because the company was in financial trouble. The group would start to quietly fade away. According to their neighbor profile, Jin Kyung and Unji both left the group and agency in September of 2009. Dr. Music said the group would be reorganized and come back again, but that never actually happened. Baby Vox Rev never got an official disbandment statement from their company, Company, but there also has not been any other activities. As of 2021, it's safe to say they have disbanded. Now that we have an idea of what took place during the short-lived career of Baby Vox Rev, let's get into what the members have been doing since. Un Jin Kyung left the group shortly after the Believe promotions and went on to become a solo artist. She apparently sued Dr. Music for having a slave contract and she won. She has since released multiple songs and has collaborated with artists like Mir, from M Black, which is interesting because Kan Myon of Original Baby Vox did so Ooh. as well, and Gikwang from Beast slash Highlight. Following her solo promotions, she started to act. You may have seen her in the K drama Athena, Goddess of War. Ooh, that's a really big mm -hmm. one for her to be on. Good for her. Most recently, she performed on Sugar Man on April 5th, 2016, with two other second gen artists. Sugar Man is a show that brings old songs back to the public's eye. Like Ying Kyung, Young Eunji left after their second album promotions. In June of 2009, articles came out saying that she and her longtime boyfriend, 
Lee Ho were possibly going to get married in December of 2009. And she would go on to marry Lee Ho and they would have three daughters. As of 2021, she's appearing on the SBS show Goal Hitting Girls and also made an appearance on King of the Masked Singer. When it comes to Byung Sarang, unfortunately we couldn't really find anything recent about her, so... If you know, please comment on our doc. We would love to add some extra info about her if you know anything. Soon after leaving Baby Box Rev, Hane Ri was in surgery and had some complications that could have taken her life. Thankfully, she made it through, though her health scare would cause an incredible rush of articles as well as public debate about the safety of plastic surgery. She would later come out and say that the surgery that she was having wasn't actually for plastic surgery, but who who <laughs> pays attention to corrections? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Once recovered, she said she would start working towards an acting career. The most recent article about her that I found was from 2013, and in it, the reporter recounted her time in the industry and revealed that she was studying theater and film in a Seoul university. Unfortunately, I haven't found anything more recent than that. So did she ever act? I don't know. In April of 2012, Han Kyung married her boyfriend of five years, who was a choreographer. The two would go on to have a child a few years later. Good for them. Most recently, she appeared on the show Miss Trot in 2019. Good for her. As for Oh Min Jin, just like with Myung Sarang, we were unable to find any current news on her. Finally, after the end of her time with Rev, Park Sori attended the Thailand Cannes Film Festival in April of 2009. She was going to possibly be added to Rania, Dr. Music's next group. But ultimately, that did not work out for her. Which might have been a blessing in disguise. A few years later, in January of 2012, Sori married Che dong who was known for being Becky Young's manager. A few months later, she gave birth to a baby boy on July 6, 2012. That kid is almost 10 years old. 10 years old next year. Wow, math. She recently made headlines for winning the top prize at a yoga competition in October of this year. So, she out doing things. She living her best life. So, to wrap up, a lot of effort was put into the debut of Baby Vox Rev, but ultimately, the effort, in a way, went to waste for a handful of reasons. Perhaps the biggest being the constant comparison to their sister group. Unfortunately, what Dr. Music thought would be their biggest attribute may have contributed to their eventual downfall. Constant comparisons usually leave people with a bad taste in their mouth. Another issue was the fact that the industry was becoming increasingly saturated and many companies were pumping out groups with the hopes that they would become the next XYZ first generation group or whatever you want to call it. If too many groups are in the public eye, only a few can survive. It's essentially survival of the fittest out there. (laughs) Another possibility is that their sexy marketing was just not compelling to the public. Many articles mentioned that seasoned solo artists like Ihyori had a much better reception to her sexy concepts, while new groups like Kara were looked on positively for their fresh concepts. While the girls were incredibly talented and put so much time and hard work into their craft, at the end of the day, many people are unaware of their legacy. Hopefully this episode shines some light on that. Now, let's jump over to the song of the day. Uh, okay. Song of the day! Ha! Huh. Today, November 28th, in the far, far far-gone age of 2007, Galaxy Express released their second EP, Ramble Around, which has the title track, or at least the main single that got noticed, Jungle the Black. So, Galaxy Express is a rock band, and with this being such an early release in their career, this whole EP has a way more unrefined garage rock or punk vibe to it than some of their newer releases have because the main thing about Galaxy Express, their music is very upbeat and fast paced and just filled with energy and so is this but this just sounds more dirty in a way. I don't know how to describe it but it's a very interesting release in their discography and if you want to listen to it you can actually find this album and pretty much all of their other albums too on their band camp because (laughs) small record. (laughs) If you like alternative music, go listen to Galaxy Express. They good. As this is a special episode thing, I'm only going to ask this to Min and JR. I highly doubt you know this, but I'm still going to ask. So, I mentioned earlier that Kanmyeon did a collaboration with Mir. Do you know what the song was? No. See, I didn't even know that they had a collaboration together. 
this was actually the first time I heard about Kanmyeon. I did not know she was in Baby Box for years. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so interesting. I, just, I knew that she was like a first gen artist, but I thought she'd always been solo. Just because mm. I'd heard more of her solo stuff than her group stuff. And so like going back and looking at Baby Vox, especially like Ya yeah, Ya yeah, Ya, yeah, and it's like she looks nothing like her when she collaborated with Mir. Because she had a really short haircut. She had like really heavy makeup. So it's like I did not recognize her at all. So Min would you do you know because you were around this time period and this would be like a track you would like uh the only track of hers that i can remember off the top of my head is paparazzi <laughs> that was years before uh, this. they did a song i think it was around 2010 called crazy oh uh, and ooh, at one point she ties up mirror and like has him like at a table and she's like trying to marry him and stuff <laughs> it's interesting. really interesting yeah, it's really, like, creepy, but, like, the collab was actually really good. I will say this. They worked really well together. Yeah, that's some... It's not trivia, like, in the traditional sense of how we do trivia, but it's just random information. Very so, interesting. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. I, I have not seen it in, like, five years, but I've still got the song and it holds up, so... It's very digital sounding. Mm. But because you guys have seen her, the Baby Vox stuff that she did, watching this, it's like, is that the same person? Yes, I highly recommend you listen to Crazy by Kan Mion. JR, take it away. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the episode, then please make sure to rate, subscribe, follow, and tell your friends about us. If you want to interact with us or just see more of our content, then you can follow us on Twitter at K-pop Sunbase, or on our other social media platforms, which will be linked in the description. Also, don't forget that our next episode comes out in December. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Annyeong.